All right. So yeah, getting this thing started. What is the expansive journey all about? And um, really what inspires you to create with that? Yeah. Well, um, I guess at least for me, there have been certain points of this path, like in a lot of confusion, because this is not sim- something I can really grasp uh, in the sense, uh, as you can with other things that are more mind related. So I guess the videos that I make is more for, um, it just feels right to share it in a way that I can't really describe. And mm-hmm. um and I've been like different phases. Like the first phase for me was back in 2017. And I experienced like an initial awakening, which was, I, I didn't know that was awakening. I just knew that I felt like space or I, I just felt like I was not the mind in a sense. I mm. probably would not put it that way back then. Yeah. But uh, like, that's the words I, I, I learned you can say to put on it. Right? S- something was different. <laughs> Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like I was floating for months until I was back. And uh, yeah, it felt really, really uncomfortable to be in the ego personality. Uh, but I was, I was definitely back in a sense, even though it felt so superficial and fake in, in a, or, or uncomfortable in a way I just, uh, I, I can't really describe. So. So for me too, like everything was very gradual. Uh, awakening was gradual. Uh, realizing that uh, the present moment was the only thing and uh, realizing I'm not the, the thought-based identity. Uh, all of that happened over maybe a, a year or so until, um, yeah, I would say I went into post-awakening in 2018, uh, if I can put a timestamp on it. And then sort of like the matrix, that's when I took the red pill. Like I, I saw through the, through the, uh, the world as I had learned to know it was mm-hmm. just a cluster of thoughts, a cluster of ideas. And I started to see through the conceptual reality, I would say. And um, after that, I was really, really looking for answers. Like, holy, holy cow, like, what is going on? And I was like, it's so sensitive. Uh, I felt things so on and intuitive mm-hmm. and um, I guess I, I was really trying to figure out what this was. And I thought maybe I'm going crazy, right? <laughs> um, but I mm. couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't describe it. And I felt really intuitively like I can't tell anyone about this ever. Like I did, I can not, I will not be, people will not sort of like meet me there. Uh, at least the people in my life back then. And so, so I kept it to myself and tried to, pretend like nothing had happened um and this was all back in 2018 and i was i was a student back then and i just remember how meaningless everything felt mm. and how uh, i lost all motivation the things that used to drive me was so ego driven right like want to accomplish something want to become someone want to sort of create myself and i started looking for answers in like personal development and like law of attraction because it's so full spirit, spiritual in a sense, or it can fall into that community in a sense. Um, it just made no, no sense. Like this was not the answer to my questions, which were much more existential. And, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, related to the expansive journey, which was your question. Um, it was, um, it was a couple of three, four years where I, um, was looking for the answers and then it felt more like uh, finding the answer in me more and more and then mm. feeling called to share it. Yeah. But I guess like the main teacher that, um, that has really helped me, I would say is Angelo DeLulo. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, yeah. I had a talk with him. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout yeah. Out Angelo. So- <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember I found this book and um, it was very, very, very helpful to point me in um, uh, the direction of the, my direct experience because I was so looking for the answer in the mind, like in a spiritual sort of matrix. Like, uh, and I was really, really stuck there. After awakening, I, I couldn't go back to the, to the formless feeling. I, I was really in the, I would say the... Um, the spiritual matrix, uh, really like looking for answers everywhere. And 
it was like I had to burn all those bridges mm-hmm. before I realized that mm, there's nothing there and the answer has to be somewhere else and it just required a complete surrender yeah. and uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> then I started to share videos but they have changed over time and I guess I I felt um, at least in the beginning that I should I felt like I could not really share from the right place because I was still so mental about this, yeah. like looking for mental answers and sharing it in a mental way. And it felt like something was not right. So I guess it has changed. My message or whatever has changed over time. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. So yeah. Hmm, what is your message? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I share what um comes to me naturally um yeah, if i have like, like spontaneous oh, thing kind of uh some are spontaneous and sometimes i have an insight and um i guess it formulates in my mind the insights that i've had and then i want to share it so mm-hmm. yeah i guess i focus a lot on the mind because that's where it was where i was very very stuck yeah. And uh, but I think the emotion work is equally important. And mm. yeah, I see. Sure. Hmm, that's great. Yeah. So, how would you describe this so-called awakening mm-hmm. that you had in 2017, 2018? Yeah. To somebody that really has no idea, the layman, <laughs> they're like, what, what is this all about? How would you yeah. try and describe this? And I know, preface, mm-hmm. it's truly an indescribable thing, but yeah. let's have some fun here. How would you describe yeah. that? Well, I think I would try to um, describe it. Uh, and I have done this approach in some of my videos. And um, I would probably try to get the mind on on board because um, at least as a beginning to, to, to explain awakening because um, I think we can all like, we know that something happened in our early childhood, right? Something, we were like born as clean, uh, clean sheets. Like yeah. there was no, uh, there were no stories about who we were and who, um, what the world is, right? This is something we learn. And it's like a program that we um, that we enter or download, I guess, from our culture and parents and stuff like that and experiences. So I guess I would just, uh, well, if, if you think about it that way, if someone is listening and have not had an awakening, I would say that you wake up from the mind in a sense. You wake up from the thoughts go from internal to external in some sense. It was like, the, I'm not the thoughts. The thoughts are, are existing here. But I'm not thinking them. They are appearing in a sense. Mm -hmm. And the stories are just stories. And they are programmed from your your whole life, right? And they're usually stories about the past and the future, self and others, and uh, judgments, right? And uh, good and bad, all all of that that we go around and think about. And it's usually quite similar, I think, uh, from human to human. I mean, of course, we go through different experiences and some things are more emotionally loaded from person to person but i think there's we're much much more similar the ego is much more similar across the world than we think it is i think um but yeah i would explain it as uh, something that you enter a program as a child and you go back to the clean sheet or you start to see it Mm. uh, for what it is the thoughts for what it is yeah Mm, yeah i see Mm. and in that is there an incentive to this? You know, if somebody's like, yeah. okay, that's cool. The, you know, why, why, why would I want that? Is this something that I want? Well, uh, I would say that the mind, at least my mind, <laughs> this mind was, was, was not ready for it. Like it wouldn't have chosen it if it knew that I would have to surrender so much of the self, of the identity that I've spent a lot of time creating and investing in, right? It feels like a loss. There's a lot of grieving in that process. At least it was for me. And, uh, and, uh, but, ha- but there's still this, uh, freedom and I would say love too. Mm-hmm. And, and living authentically, it's so more, much more effortless. Yeah. And it's so much more love that feels like, um, that is not like cre- that I create the force. It's not like I'm doing affirmation. It just, it just, 
uh, wakes up in a sense, I guess, mm-hmm. too. Like you, you remember or recognize um, something that is. It feels like I'm I'm home in a sense that I am lost. And I knew I knew my my whole like I woke up when I was like uh, 21, 22, and you like the whole ten years, especially before that, like eleven till. Uh, yeah, 21. I just, I was in a prison. Like, I was so, I felt like my personality was fake. I felt like no matter what I, personality I took on, it felt so tainted, especially the one that tried to compensate for the insecurities and, uh, um, and, and the, the not good enough me, like the perfectionist, the, 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 the ideas that were trying to, um, yeah, like it was actually a response to the the suffering self, I would say. So, um, and I felt it was fake and I knew it, right? But I, in a sense, I couldn't really break free from it until I, uh, certain things happened that made me really forced to surrender. And uh, yeah. yeah, and you think it's, as long as you hold on to the mind, you, th- you think it will give you something, right? You think it will... Um, uh, make you happy if you just turn into this or get that there and get that right but i noticed that if every moment is just now 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 and if i'm just staying present it doesn't really matter yeah what happens or where i go or who i'm with if i just tackle every second or every moment as it is mm-hmm. um, i don't really I, I can be anywhere and i, I wouldn't say do anything but I would, I'm, I'm able to face life, whatever it, it, it throws at me, because, um, it's not so much, uh, I don't need reality to be a certain way to, 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 to make yeah. me happy. Mm-hmm. Even though there are still patterns and avoidance patterns that I've been working on, especially maybe the last year, um, and they can show up in situations there where I'm like, oh no, I don't like that. I'm trying to avoid that, like the preferences, but, yeah, I guess there's a fine line between like boundaries, you know, you, you know intuitively that something isn't right for you or something isn't, so someone isn't treating you with love, for example. And I think it's okay to have, at least for now, I think it's okay to have preferences in that sense and uh, gravitate away from um, harmful situations, we can mm-hmm. say. I yeah. see. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. So the incentive seems to be in just being okay (laughs) with being alive with just being uh just here and now and obviously that's a cliche but Mm -hmm. in the here and nowness um yeah it's yeah it's it's finding a sense of peace with all the comings and goings of the human condition all the phenomena it's just being cool with it and it's easier said than done, but would you say that is the goal per se? Um, I know that might not be the right way to say it, but <laughs> if there is a goal to this thing, it's to just to just enjoy life, you know, yeah. to just be yeah. here with it all. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. Um, yeah, I would say for me, like liberation is some sense and um, not resisting life, not running away from life or forcing life, not trying to manipulate life. Yeah. And just be with what is. And I, because that's, it's the only thing that exists anyway, right? Everything else is just the mind talking about it. So it's just actually a waste. I think that's what actually the, the thing that came to me back when I initially wake up, woke up was I realized how much time and effort and energy I've spent in the stories and in this, uh, trying to fix life, trying to think differently so mm-hmm. I could feel better. Mm-hmm. And just as, as seeing that as totally waste of time and a, totally like unnecessary. And it had never really solved anything <laughs> in my life. And then starting to take like every moment. Um, and it, it was very like anxiety reducing too, to just starting to live in the moment because um, then you can sort of like respond to whatever is right now instead of constantly trying to fix it in the mind and um, trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's about. I feel as though we give up a sense of control. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Naturally the mind, it seems in the conditioned patterns that we build, 
um, with the yeah. ego, it seems like we build a, um, an idealized sense of control. Um, yeah. But really, we're not in control. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're not. So that in that surrender is, is peace. It's just having enough humility to admit that mm -hmm. we really don't have much. I mean, we have some control, I guess, if you want to look at it mm -hmm. in a certain way, but in the whole scheme of things, we're not in control here. It's best to just approach this as a yeah. sort of movie and just yeah just watch it <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah uh, that's more like a detached place and that's uh, much more comfortable to be, than being like uh, a person that has to um fix this future uh, fix this life right um yeah, and yeah. about like the thing that you say about control is like um I noticed that there are still preferences here. Like, for example, I prefer this and I prefer that. Um, and also, like, the, there are, um, I would say, inspiration. Like, there, there's much more, there, there's much less fear driven motivation and much more yeah. love or inspiration driven, mm -hmm. joy driven. Um, but I don't really choose the ideas, right? I don't really choose the, oh, I want to travel there or I want to, uh, start working there right or i want to go out and do this thing you know it sort of just happens a little bit like a spontaneous and inspirational motivation much, much more like when i was a child and you just when you were playing as a child yeah. and uh, you were just like imagining in the moment and just spontaneously oh let's do that oh let's go there mm -hmm. you're making up the rules of the game as, as we went on right yeah. and then the game you got tired of the game and then you started doing something else right so I think this is much more for me. I recognize this from, from, from childhood and the spontaneity and the much more, like, much less fear driven. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That just brings me back to the Bible quote um, that goes, you know, unless you become like children, you'll never yeah. enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much what you just described. Yeah. Just becoming more childlike. Mm hmm. More playful. But I think we do that by surrendering the fear because as adults, we got so used to these fear patterns that we think like people build their whole lives around their, their trauma and their suffering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was a lot of shame. I was, I was ashamed of, of deep aspects of myself. And, um, and, and I built a whole life trying to control that by creating a perfection, per perfection of the image, right? If I'm going to be perfect here, then no one is going to invoke that shame in me, right? Trying to protect the suffering. And for some people, it's fear. For some other people, it's anger or guilt. And we build these relationships and we build these careers and we all do all these uh, human things <laughs> trying mm -hmm. to uh, cover it up and hide from our, our suffering. And at least when I woke up, those strategies didn't work anymore <laughs> because the shame was facing me like directly instead of being able to, um, I would say it didn't help to try to create a cool persona to to compensate for it because I, I knew it wasn't real. It, it felt like I was playing this game and I, I just I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. It was almost impossible. So yeah. Yeah, and then once you see through it, I feel like it's that's it. You can't unsee it. Once you see through yeah. the illusion of the ego, it's like you know yeah. how futile it is. Yeah, <laughs> you, I, I tried fooling myself for a long time until I, I, I realized that I, this is it's not working anymore. I, and and I got this like anxiety attacks even after awakening in the post awakening phase because yeah. the roles I used to play they were so solid and then they weren't anymore. Then I I had nothing to hide behind. I was yeah. so like raw, vulnerable, open. And it was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm vulnerable now. Like I'm, I'm back here, right? And then, yeah, that's when the shadow material comes up. And uh, I think looking back to it now, of, of course, there's still come up shadow material, even though it's much lesser, I would say, a much more a less in, uh, intense way. It's still that I look back at it as a very beautiful journey. Like there's, I have so much love for that pain now, looking mm -hmm. back to it. It's, it's not something I judge and try to run away from because that's how it um, is created in the first place by us rejecting certain aspects of this cosmos universe creation. Then it stays there in shame or in fear, right? Or anger. Yeah. 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 So when we do accept uh, 
our place in the greater whole, one could say, when we do accept and surrender to the present moment, to a mm. higher force than just us, would you say one's character changes, one's motivations changes toward a certain kind of orientation or inclination in the way that we decide to play this game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, as I mentioned, I feel like my uh, motivation is not so much fear driven anymore. It was like um, my I was running on the, this engine that the fuel was fear or or shame or or all these things that try to um, fix uh, the, the underneath pain, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the, after awakening, there there was the, no fuel, <laughs> no no car, nothing. So there was like a complete nothingness, an existential feeling that I couldn't. It was like I couldn't move. It was so. Um, yeah, I was really stuck in this space where I, I couldn't, I had no aspirations or motivations or anything. And then uh, after um, Dark Knight of the Soul and, and those really intense post-awakening phases and, and, and um, yeah, integration phase, I would say, um, it's like there's a different motivation that, that pulls me. That's, yeah, that's motivated by joy, love and intuition. And uh, yeah, it's like, I'm being pulled and uh, it's much more spontaneous too. It's much more, um, yeah, it, it feels like I'm in, uh, I'm in an energy or I'm in this feeling and mm -hmm. then um, the action steps are just happenings in a sense. But yeah. the most important is that I'm in this feeling that is much more uh, enjoyable than mm -hmm. this. I, I, at least for me, I used to push myself really hard. I used to like almost like... Um, I would say almost abuse myself for, for periods of time because I um, I struggled with eating disorder when I was younger and uh, before awakening. And it was so much like this force that I put into. And it was so much like self-hate almost, trying to, to fix myself all the time. And that mm -hmm. changed completely. That's not even... Uh, yeah, it felt like I became whole after awakening. It felt like there was just one of me. Like I was not in all this stories i was not all these um images or 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 identities i was not these roles it was just one and it had always just been one <laughs> then it's yeah it, it's not something you can capture in the mind so yeah, yeah. there always will be one yeah that is the truth and, yeah. and that oneness is me and you and the listener yeah. we are the one and yeah i feel like once you do surrender to the one there is yeah. a different kind of will that comes about, but it's not will that comes from my sense of separateness, a sense of mm -hmm. competition, like a sense of me trying yeah. to get better over you. It's a will that seems to be of love. Uh, yeah, I don't know how else to mm -hmm. describe it. It's just becoming um, some kind of servant, some yeah. kind of servant to this oneness, yeah. to this greater whole. It just yeah. flows like some kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. some kind of spontaneous creation. Like we become yeah. this, um, some instrument of the divine, you know, we, mm -hmm. we become just something that um, ex we're like the one expressing itself as a helper to the one. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of different metaphors that one could use. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I think you can kind of grasp what I'm trying to say. It's like our motivations do change, but it's not our motivations. It's like there is mm -hmm. another motivation, but it just seemingly flows naturally, mm -hmm. it seems, when one does get that glimpse into um, the the greater aspect of yeah. oneself. When you sort of realize that oneness and you feel the connection to everything, and uh, because for me it was like a filter that was being removed, and it's still like more and more being removed. Um, you feel more connected to everything, and that's also where the sensitivity comes in, where you become more aware of everything that makes you feel separate, right? Mm -hmm. It's not new pain; it's old pain, and mm. you're, uh, it can be new too. But it's mostly for me, I think, it was. I became aware of the separation feeling and how very uncomfortable it was and how much fear it was and how much like the, the social game, right? It makes, it makes no sense when you become authentic because yeah. there's nothing really to achieve anymore with, with creating this persona and 
get sort of social control. Like when it comes to like the Buddha talks about compassion and like I think Jesus talked about love, right? Unconditional love. And um, and I think that it's not like it will just come very, very, very natural when you realize that everything is, is essentially what you are, right? With everything, mm-hmm. everything is you. Well, you wouldn't harm yourself because there's nothing to that would not make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's love, realizing that you see yourself in everything and be connected to everything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you like it or don't. It doesn't matter what, you, what the mind, the judgment the mind makes about it, because essentially you know the, the connection to the core, right? Yeah. 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 And like I said before, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can't take the blue pill. Mm. it's quite powerful it's quite powerful Hmm. and it seems to be like a um a global um a global change like there's a lot of um wait awakenings that's going on um, and uh, that might be something that i perceive because i'm looking for that information so i can't really say that's what's uh, it is real or not but I think there's a growing awareness in a sense. Um, so. Yeah, definitely that people are becoming aware of their suffering in a deeper sense and, mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah, become aware of the, the strong, the things that we use to see as normal, you know, our society is not as accepted anymore. It's, uh, yeah, it's much more, it's much, much less tolerated in a sense too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. I like what you said. We're becoming aware of our suffering. Yeah. Truly. I yeah. think that's what's happening. And I think that is what's catalyzing others to yeah. find this natural way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's a, there's a right timing for, for everything because I, I have like friends that have not had an awakening, but the past years they have become very, very aware of how they really feel underneath, right? Mm-hmm. They have the experience like depression or anxiety that these things that come to the surface, um, that haven't really been there before. So we're, we're all connected too. So I think this is something that happens uh, globally, like the, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. Something's yeah. happening. Something's yeah, happening. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting yeah. times we're living in for sure. But Definitely. at the end of the day, yeah. it doesn't matter per se to yeah. you know me, the person you see on the screen, and you and the listener. It really mm-hmm. doesn't matter what's happening with mm-hmm. anybody else. It is interesting to think about, and you yeah. know, it is quite intriguing to actually fathom that these you know we're all waking up to our innate oneness. That is great. Yeah. But at the end of the day it's all about you, you know, it's all about, (laughs) and that may seem contradictory because we say that like, it's not about you, but Mm -hmm. mm, it's a paradox. It's like, (laughs) it's it's like in our separation in taking care of one self as the separate self, that's the only way that we can find our connection to the greater whole. Yeah. Um, It's all within, you know, that's a cliche again. It's all, it's all Mm -hmm. within you. And then once you go within you, you find out the you is also (laughs) without um, yeah. So yeah, it's this back and forth paradox that uh, is truly hard to comprehend mm-hmm. and hard to explain. There can be a lot of like denial of the of the mental self too, like the the separate self, and uh, we we can yeah. Uh, I think Angelo calls this like a negative uh, negative person or negative personality or something like that, where you completely I'm nothing, right? I I. I you're still a separate self, but you create this nothing self. <laughs> yeah. And for me, that's like, it felt not like love at all. It felt much more loving to embrace Julie. Like, and I wouldn't say that it's one Julie. There are many versions of Julie, like young Julie, teenage Julie, like cool Julie, lame Julie, <laughs> like a lot of different yeah. stories and the, the ideas about who you are. It's, it's more like a, a gathering and, um, mm an acceptance and, and seeing them the way you look at your, your hand, right? The way you look at 
yeah, you, you listen to a sound, you can see this, these thoughts and these identities that you have been take, uh, carrying on. Yeah, and, uh, and treat them with love and acceptance because they are also part of this whole, right? They are part of the creation. And uh, the way I see it is that um, we go like God or source or the true self, whatever we want to call it, it goes on a journey where it forgets itself and it creates a separate self. It creates an identity. And that's exciting. That's, that's interesting, right? For the mm-hmm. form wants to be a form. It's really... Cool. It's really awesome. There needs the suffering to wake up, or it, maybe it would stay in the dream forever. But it has to return back to itself eventually, and then it, it takes like the journey home from creating itself to dismantling itself and realize its its formlessness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's recognizing the formlessness while in form. Yeah, that's yeah. quite peculiar. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I guess there's a, I don't know how it was for you, but, um, and, and others, but for me, it was definitely out of form and then back into form and, um, and out of form was very comfortable <laughs> and becoming formless, but then being back into the form. And that's where for me, at least the real work begins, like the real integration work, because, um, it can be a lot of resistance to form because there's emotions there that are uncomfortable. That, that's mainly it, I think, the, the painful, the suffering, the, the feeling of emotions. And liberation is also, I think, not running away from them and uh, becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah. That's something that we can, um, that, that's also unconditional love, in a sense, mm-hmm. to, uh, to move into what's, um, yeah, what's not being seen or what is hidden or what is um, uncomfortable to feel. Yeah. yeah. And what is what repressed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's uh, the humbling journey, really. <laughs> that's when you become uh, the true dismantling happens or the true integration happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's really what it's all about. It's that those repressed emotions that keep us confined um, yeah. in, in this sense of separate self um they don't really call the shots anymore with this newfound Mm -hmm. perspective it's like the expression of gary or julie or whoever's listening expresses itself differently from the vantage point of the brahman of the one with that knowing you know with that knowing always in the back of one's head Mm -hmm. it just um it just it's different it's different and yeah it's more so aligned with unconditional love for all of our ups and downs all of our pains and pleasures it's just loving it and then yeah yeah it just becomes easier to bear all of our so-called suffering is a little bit different (laughs) for sure because you see it from that not involved um trying to control kind of space like the little me trying to 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 manage this or fix this right Mm. and a much more um but, but in my, my experience, there are different like levels or I would say um, layers of ego, if I can put it into that, that term. It's like it, it comes up. It's certain now it's more like situational. Um, mm, yeah. It's like when I'm when I'm in that when I'm in that energy, I'm totally in it, right? Until I surrender and it integrates, and uh, I can look back at it with love. Right. But when you're in it, I, I want to just validate that too, because it's so uncomfortable. It's not just like, it, it can be comfortable to want to detach and look at the pain from the outside. Right. But the, the, the true healing happens when we move into the pain and we almost like become the pain or we fully merge with the pain. Yeah. That's when it truly heals and, and integrates. And we can talk about love and we can talk about healing, but as long as we, Keep it on an emotional distance. As long as we reject it, it it um, it stays in a sense, mm-hmm. and it, it stays separate from us. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I would say to that point, the difference is, like you said, we merge with the pain, mm-hmm. and in that, we lose the victim mindset. There is nobody yeah. that is victimized. The pain is yeah. just happening, and it comes yeah. and goes just like anything else. It's exactly. being able to see it as just another temporary phenomenon. That is yeah. quite empowering to know that mm-hmm. the pain is not us. We, no, don't mm-hmm. identify with this pain or said suffering. It will come and go just like anything else. And in yeah. that is that sense of ease. 
It is that yeah. peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In in the pain, it's it's the freedom from pain too. Like it, mm. it's, that's also paradoxical. Mm-hmm. Um, allowing the pain to be and, and even expand, like like show me right the, the grief, for example, or, or shame, like be bigger like don't be small like like show me what you are and really and um, merge with it and um, that's when at least that's been the cure in a sense because that's when um, it's not something that we try to fix and manage and resist anymore yeah 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 i was actually sick last week I had a little stomach illness mm-hmm. and in that it was obviously not something that's desirable but in that i used it as a meditation i was like okay i'm gonna like i'm gonna respond to this a little differently than before and just sit with this sickness and see what this is and feel and see if i can recognize the temporary nature of it Mm. don't don't try to resist it you know not necessarily going to be pleasurable but just be with this um undesirability and Yeah. yeah it was yeah. different than before this, you know, before this newfound perspective, it was just different to be sick. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Now I'm here now, not sick. How do I put this? It's yeah. like, I realized, I, I don't know. I realized that sense of peace in the distraughtness of my situation Yeah. in the same way that I realized the peace here and now. Yeah. That's so powerful to be able to do that. This, this, yeah. That's what I really mm-hmm. think this is whole path is all about. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a process. There's definitely an integration process to be able to do that. But I think yeah. before the in, my personal integration process, I don't believe I would have been able to do that. It would have been like, mm-hmm. oh, this sucks. Woe is me. Yeah. You know, when is this going to yeah. end? But yeah. now it's different. It yeah. seems to be like a, there's a sense of equanimity between the peaceful moments in mm-hmm. the so-called unpeaceful moments yeah. of life. Because mm. they will come. Like the painful moments, they will come. But that's yeah. a part of the human experience too, right? Dukkha. So, and the more mm-hmm. present we can be in the pain, it's the more we're able to tackle it in a sense. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's what I, I feel like peace it's all found in, Sorry. Yeah. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I think the peace the peace is found in the pain, not, not trying to, not no pain, because yeah. the pain is also here to teach us uh, about pleasure, right? About the, the good feelings, about what feels good. So it gives us a contrast, and this whole universe is constructed in, in duality. And the content of this universe is duality. Mm-hmm. So nothing can exist, the way I see it at least, without a, uh, an opposite in some sense. And because the two create each other in a sense, they co-rise, and uh, at least in, in the content of experience, and maybe also like the, the I would say the primary uh, duality, which is form and formless, right? Mm-hmm. The two content versus awareness, maybe you can say, yeah. and even those co-rise, right? So that is when you see that it's it's non-duality, but even those merge in a sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like. In order to have this non-dual sense of the co-rising, the co-dependence mm-hmm. of the poles, one has to explore both poles. One has to meditate, yeah. integrate both poles, yeah. and find that that just concrete mm-hmm. stillness in both. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. In that, yeah, some, there's a new found way of looking at life. Yeah. And I think that's suffering. <laughs> suffering brings us to one of those poles. Yeah. Yeah. And allows us to see the light in the darkness. Exactly. Hmm. You can also, it's like, it takes us back to like the golden middle way, right? Like the, the extremism. It's where, like, if, if you only want pleasure, then, for example, let's say food, right? Like you only want it, want it. you eat a lot of food, maybe you're food, food addicted, right? And, and you want, um, uh, you eat a lot of food to feel the pleasure of eating food, for, for example. Mm-hmm. And the pain will inevitably come with that because you, you will, like your body will react, right? It will create suffering if you only indulge in pleasure. And however, if you only indulge in, in pain, um, that could also, you can find the liberation in the pain too, like the love in the pain 
for example, if, if you okay to take the food uh, food example, if you exercise, then um, it's painful, but you will get positive results. Right? For for it's good for the body. So I feel like um, if you turn too much in the pleasure, you the pain will arise, and if you're too much in pain, love and joy will arise in some sense. Mm-hmm. So at least that's my my experience. Yeah. Yeah. There's a golden middle way in everything. The golden middle way. Yeah. I like that. I think that's the Buddha that he's the one saying that. He says the middle way, but I like how you add it golden. Okay. That's, <laughs> and maybe that's a Norwegian translation because we say that in Norway. Uh, the oh. Yudin and so it's like the golden middle way. Yeah. The golden middle way. <laughs> mm, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that is. It's the way. The way is the way. For sure. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting about this whole thing is the dawning of love that one gets. Mm-hmm. I'm going mm-hmm. there. I'm going to talk about it. I talk mm-hmm. about it pretty much every podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but the, okay. uh, you know, the revelation of just how loved we are, unconditional love just in the present moment. Yeah. That it's like, you know, <laughs> that's irreplaceable and yeah. it's quite a miracle. And yeah. In that is freedom. To be able to surrender is Mm -hmm. surrendering to some kind of unconditional love that not only um, we are loved by, but we are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are love. It's a very different thing to 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 think about this, right? Which can be like a I would I'm not not sure if I'm going to call it a trap, but a very common thing to start. Uh, creating an idea about unconditional love, then realizing yeah. that you are unconditional love. That's two different, um, very different realities. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing is we really can't conceptualize what that means. There's no way mm-hmm. to say it other than love. And that doesn't even do it justice, especially okay. in the conceptual understanding that we have in the Western world of love. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's not like that at all, but it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if there is a word that's close to it, it's love or maybe prema in Sanskrit or agape. Um, it's quite beautiful, but I do feel as though if, if we could conceptualize God, that's what God is, is God is love. Yeah. yeah. When, when I, I, I don't know how this is in other cultures, but um, I grew up in, in Scandinavia and there's a very like... Um, um, it's a very atheist society. Um, yeah, the whole world is now, honestly. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but but I, I grew up with. It was like my my parents' generation. They had like a very. Um, they sort of broke free from that uh, the churches and how they sort of uh, ruled. They had a lot of power in society, and they yeah. didn't use it for good. So that they had a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of fear that they would spread. Uh, in society to to get uh, to to manipulate people, mm-hmm. and um, so my parents uh, parents generation sort of broke free from that. So I grew up um, the, the, having a very negative, or uh, yeah, I wouldn't say even negative, almost like a ridiculous idea of religion, right? Yeah, and, and also the idea of God in religion. It was yeah. so absurd to me, Same. and. Uh, I think there's, yeah, so I think there's a lot of religious trauma in the world um, because it has been abused in the name of, of this source, right? In the name of God, which is so paradoxical, thinking that we are this source. <laughs> and it, it creates an idea of itself that is up in the sky and that is angry and want to punish itself, <laughs> yeah. which is hilarious that we go around it and, and, and have this thought about God uh, that we are and think that it is um almost like a, a, a psych, psych, psychopathic figure in the sky that it's, uh, it's that's at least what i grew up and, and having the idea in my mind about maybe not all religions uh, or, or, or everyone grew up with that idea but for me it was so absurd uh to to realize that it's uh it doesn't exist that that figure at least <laughs> i n- never met it i've never seen it yeah uh, but i know that i am and i know that everything is or, or at least I, I I perceive it the way I perceive it, and that it, it's existence itself in a sense. Mm-hmm. If you, can, you call it something, it's 
existence itself and yeah and love as you say mm -hmm. yeah yeah same i'm in the same boat as you to be honest i was never exposed to any of it um if anybody ever mentioned the g word i'd be like come on man that's ridiculous yeah. <laughs> it's the 21st century let's grow up yeah um yeah. and i think it's because i was an atheist to those ideas and technically i still am those ideas of god are just um, they've been corrupted over the yeah, years sure. you know by the toilings of man per se by the yeah. ego it's the complete mm -hmm. opposite of god to be yeah, honest exactly. with you. yeah um yeah. yeah so it's actually like i feel as though atheists are like halfway there it's like okay mm -hmm. yeah you rejected that idea of god but keep going you're almost yeah. there figure out what yeah. this god actually is it's because god is such a weighted word and that's why we have other words even though any word doesn't do it justice but we have other words like source infinite consciousness mm -hmm. brahman it's, the, the yeah. list goes on but yeah like i said the words don't do it quite justice mm -hmm. um true. but it's true once you feel mm -hmm. it i think i said this plenty of times already once you feel mm -hmm. it you can't unfeel it it is a direct experience. Yeah. It's a direct knowing that just that just mm -hmm. happens. It seems. Yeah. And it's like it just, that, oh, it's always been like that. It's just oh, yeah, yeah. obvious. Yeah. It, exactly, yeah. it becomes obvious and apparent. I think mm -hmm. what happens is these religions, these belief systems, are all built upon pure intentions. But I think we may know the saying: uh, "The path to hell was paved with good intentions." So. Mm -hmm. I think it's just been corrupted over the years from mistranslations and egotistical, maniacal rulers, you know, using this to their advantage. And it, it started off with the ideas that we're kind of speaking about with non-dual talk and unconditional love, but just over thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of years, it's just like, it's become a mess. But at its core, if one knows how to look at these belief systems with a keen eye, one can see through um, the illusions of the dogma and really see what it's trying to tell you. Even though the truth doesn't come from a book or come from anybody preaching it, um, it's there. It's still, it's yeah. in there if you know how to look at it. Firstly, within yourself, but then if you find it within yourself, it's easier to see it um, yeah. from something else or someone else. For sure. I mean, I would totally just dismiss, dismiss or not necessarily dismiss, but I wouldn't even look at, like, for example, Jesus' messages, right? But after awakening, I can see them in a totally different light. Yeah. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's a totally different thing when you when you wake up. Before yeah, awakening, so. it's much more. It's almost like there's a strong resistance, especially when it comes to... Um, like unconditional love and uh, and um, and talking about like um, having compassion for your your enemies and stuff like that and mm -hmm. um, but of course it's like it, it it can become like this these rules right and it doesn't yeah. become authentic because you feel like oh I'm supposed to do that but I'm not I'm, I'm angry right and mm -hmm. and I, I do like that so so um, it can become like. Um, a set of rules and, and it comes actually from the ego mm -hmm. trying to create a, a perfect a perfect kind of person, right? Yep. It becomes like this um, uh, almost this like, like narcissism trying to uh, create a, a good person because it's actually a sense of guilt or there's a sense of not acceptance of what is. Mm -hmm. Instead of living this by actually seeing yourself and your enemies and realizing that what your enemies or, or enemies, uh, that's <laughs> the people that you don't get along with, maybe that's a better word, but um, that, that those, they struggle with the same things that, that you do or that you have struggled with. Uh, they also feel very separate from you and you have, they have forgotten maybe the divine connection. Mm -hmm. So they live in this idea that you are actually external to themselves, right? Mm -hmm. well, we got to forgive yeah. them, Father, for they do not know. Sorry, <laughs> we have to forgive them, Father, for they do not know. Exactly, and and it's because I've also done mistakes. I've also done things that I shouldn't have done, right? And and we, and when the more you can forgive yourself and accept your own mistakes, the easier it is to project it onto others and accept them for their mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. These are totally different things to 
to believe in this and wanting to create this persona that is uh, kind and uh, and loving than to actually face these true truths. And uh, I think it's unconditional love for me is on the other side of shadow integration that that's where it's um, blooming in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or hiding. Blooming. (laughs) Blooming into love. Yeah. (laughs) Mm, I like that word. It's blooming into this beautiful mandala of love. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's quite beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what else to say. No, neither. Not so good. Yeah. It's um yeah, it's a great thing to be alive and be able to tap in yeah. with people like you about thank this you. stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I thank you for coming on here and speaking with me. I think we can probably yeah. wrap this thing up. Uh, do you have anything yeah. else to say? It feels, feels like a natural uh, natural ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. And, um, yeah. Blossoming into unconditional love, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, uh, yeah. Hey, I thank you for coming on here and speaking with me. I think this was a great talk. Yeah, likewise. Uh, so I much. appreciate your time, yeah. effort, wisdom that you brought to this conversation. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate anybody that listened this long. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, Julie. I wish you all the best. Yeah, likewise. Peace and love, everybody. <laughs>